Now let's look at sending data from a web page to PHP. And we've already seen how to do this with get. Um, so we're also going to see how to do it with post and some things about encoding. And the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of that, because we only need one of those. And then I'm going to create a function which outputs a form. So this is going to be a function definition. And we want to have all of our function definitions and constant definitions in separate files from the code that actually generates and outputs HTML. So this one gets loaded by a user and it requires files and it displays stuff on the page. So it's going to require the file that includes the definitions. So I'm going to make a new PHP file called form.php and here I'm going to define a function called output form and it's going to take one parameter which is going to be the method so that's going to be either get or post and let's go ahead and just create a simple form method equal and then I'm going to include dollar sign method and then for action actually let's go ahead and uh, pass that as a parameter as well so there's my form tag and then we'll have an input and here I'm going to go ahead and put a constant called user input key Let's add a submit button. And then let's close off the form. Okay. Now I'm using this input user input key constant, so I have to define it. So const user input key. And this is going to be user input. And then I also want to define the name of the page that I'm going to go to when the user clicks on the submit button. And let's call that handle input.php. So you'll notice that this echo line is referring to this constant but this constant doesn't exist in this file you might want to go ahead and put a require once here like so but this is actually considered bad coding practice according to PSR1 which we'll see later on um, and what we're going to do instead is we're going to require both constants and form inside of the main page that the user looks at. So like so.
So this is actually going to load both the constants that includes the user input key and the code to generate the form. And as long as we've loaded both things on this page, we can go ahead and call our form function, output form function, and it will work fine. So let's go ahead and do that. And here I'm going to create a PHP island, and I'm going to call output form. And let's start with get as the method and target page as the target. So let's go ahead and create the target page as well. Which we've called handle input.php. So this is going to be a user accessible page, user loadable page. So it's going right in the week six folder. And all this is going to do is echo the value of dollar sign under get. So user input key. So this is a user-facing page, and it's accessing a constant. So it's perfectly kosher to go ahead and require once include slash constants here. And then let's go ahead and load the page, see what we get. So I'm going to go to, I'm already at hello, I'm going to reload. So here's my form. I'm going to type hello PHP and hit submit. And I get hello PHP as the output. So let's look at what's going on. If I hit F12, go to network, and hit reload, here's the query. And the user input was put as a key value pair inside the URL. So here's the key and here's the value. And you'll notice that the value itself has been encoded. So it replaced the space with a plus sign and replaced the exclamation point with percent %21. And then in the back end, when we got the value of user input, we got our space back and we got our percent sign back. So it's encoded for transmission and then PHP automatically decodes it and echoes it. And the data itself is passed in the URL. So now let's try a post. Change the method to post. and change this to dollar sign under post. And I'm going to go back and hit reload and type hello PHP again, just like I did before, and hit submit. And I get the same output. But let's look at what happened with this post request. So method is post. You'll notice that there's nothing in the URL, so the data wasn't sent there. Where it was actually sent was in the request body itself. So here's the request. And if I view source on the request, we see that the method is post. Here's the target page I'm fetching and the protocol I'm using. Then a whole bunch of fields. Content length, that's going to be the length of the data that I'm passing to the PHP server. And then you'll see that there's something called form data here, which is basically the exact same thing that you would have seen in the URL with get method. So the difference between get method and post method is just whether the data is passed in on the URL or whether it's passed in on the form body. It's the 
same format and the same encoding either way.